Welcome everybody to another one of my uh, podcasts and uh, this is, dare I say, world first? I don't know, this is a first because welcome back Mr. Tom Boston, the first returning guest on the, on my uh, uh, my uh, podcast, which is awesome. For those of you that don't know Tom Boston, you've been either you're not in the tech industry or you're hiding under a rock or you're not on the social, but uh, I've known Tom for I think, well over a, a year now and we've been following his journey at Sales Loft and he's a content creator extraordinaire and what's been really fascinating is following his journey and i will shut up in a minute and let tom do the speaking is that he's recently changed roles um to his title is social sales evangelist and we all know the kind of the big debate the conversations happening around social selling who owns social selling does social selling even work how do i go about creating content yada 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 so i thought who better than to get back the brilliant and wonderful tom boston to share his journey when the last time we did this was just when the pandemic was kicking off and we were going ah, this this will be all right we'll be out of the woods pretty quickly and here we are for a year and a half later and we're still at home tom welcome <laughs> thanks sir uh... <laughs> and the wi-fi so much, it was it was just over a, a year ago the the wi-fi are we, are we, have you still got me yeah, no, we're good. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. <laughs> I might have to upgrade my uh, wi- Wi-Fi provider. It's been, uh, it's, I've been 18 months of remote working, but I'm still, <laughs> I've still not made the plunge. Have you, as long as you can hear me loud and clear. But I was, yeah. I, I was saying that, yeah, we spoke um, right at the beginning of the pandemic and, uh, and here we still are. So much has changed. You know, I've, I've actually changed roles at Sales Loft, gone from a, an SDR role into a marketing role, this social sales evangelist role and uh, all the way through the pandemic and uh, i've always i've always enjoyed speaking to people uh, online about yeah the trials and tribulations of uh, of remote work and it's been uh, it's been a journey definitely <laughs> so um for those people that don't know let's just say you know, what, what what is sales loft who is sales loft yes yeah, so sales loft is a sales engagement platform we essentially help reps to do more, to close more, to have better conversations. We sit on top of the CRM mm -hmm. and we turn reps into super sellers. Allow them to hit their KPIs, achieve their goals, sell better. That's, that's us in a nutshell. Cool. Awesome. And so you started out as an, as an SDR. So you were there setting the meetings, creating the, uh, the, the calls and all that kind of stuff. And then you started to kind of move into um, the content uh, creation. And I think we should caveat Tom, that your kind of background, former uh, radio DJ, is that correct? So you kind of, you've, you've come from the world of con you are comfortable in terms of content and content creation. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. I once, once upon a time, I, I was the host of a breakfast radio show. Um, it sounds Newcastle, very small listenership, but I had a lot of fun along the way. And I, I guess, yeah, I was uh, I was kind of tasked with creating daily content for that for that radio show. So I'm, uh, I, yeah, I've come from a background of having to think on my feet and think of creative and entertaining ideas um, that that people are going to like and enjoy. Cool. And so what kind of gave you the, the, the idea to, you know, bring, bring that into, well, let's be honest, is a pretty traditional outbound, bash the phones, bash the emails, numbers game, um, you know, you can throw all the technology in the world that you want to augment it and support it, but it's, it is the more conversations that you, that you have. So what, what made you kind of think, you know what, let, let's give this a go and see what happens. Well, I, I think you have to put yourself into the process, right? And mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate of that. You know, there's no, there's no kind of one set SDR, like this is, this is what you say, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone comes from a different background. We've all got different personalities. And I believe the best way to, to be successful as a rep is to inject your personality in um, it's a funny one because we you know we've only got one one personality so i thought well i'm 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 gonna kind of bring that into what i'm doing i'm not gonna have that as a separate thing you know i am i am quite a silly person and i and i do like to make people smile and i thought well I, i'm not gonna kind of hide that away from uh from my daily 
my daily role, right? Mm. If anything, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of merge the two and, and kind of think, well, yeah, could, could this work um, in a, in a kind of outbound sales uh, environment? Mm -hmm. And I've, and I've found that um, kind of bringing my personality into the prospecting and the video prospecting that I was doing, and also then letting that kind of grow on my world has, um, has, has really worked for me and uh, has allowed me to kind of break through the noise with the outbound and then also receive um, kind of inbound leads as well. So it's been like the best of, of both. Of course. And did you kind of go to, um, so I know Ollie from, Ollie from his you know, previous life at LinkedIn and now obviously your um, uh, former manager. <laughs> um, did you kind of go to him and go, can I do this? Or did you just start doing it and just hope for the best? Yeah, well, with the, with the kind of content, side of things you know way back when I started it was all just about brand awareness and we were we were tasked with going look what what can we do online mm -hmm. to to guess I guess shout, shout about um the office launching yeah. and the fact that we had an Amir office and mm -hmm. we just wanted to yeah to show people what, what we were doing and and I wasn't really doing a lot you know I'd I'd kind of left LinkedIn a little bit I, I wasn't really updating anything yeah. and I'd, I'd looked at my profile and gone well when when someone has a look at my profile when I'm when I'm prospecting them they're not going to see much much of me mm -hmm. you know they're, they're really they're really not so I'd, I'd kind of made the decision to go well I'm gonna go. and the whole team were really supportive of of that mm -hmm. um but yeah I I'd, I'd kind of took that initiative to go well it's probably not going to be great right at the beginning but this is going to be a long-term thing. You know, yeah. it's a, it's a marathon, not sprint. Let's just, let's just kind of trickle the content and, and kind of let it, let it grow and do it, do its own thing. And as the confidence grew, I'm, I'm now making content that I probably wouldn't have made when I, when I started, mm -hmm. because I'd have been like, no, that's, that's not going to work. Or yeah. that's not going to, that's not going to land. But I feel like as I've, as I've got a bit of a feel for it and I, I kind of understand, oh, that, that's kind of been popular before or, or that's the kind of content I in the content that, that you enjoy rather yeah. than content that I, I think other people might like or I might get a lot of views. It's actually going, well, let's, let's make it enjoyable right from the beginning. And as, as long as you're having fun making it, I find that they have fun watching it. Yeah. Because it comes, it comes across in terms of the, the, the you know, your personalities comes across. And I think, you know, I kind of been on the, the, the same journey, nowhere near as sophisticated in terms of you, in terms of the, the content creation. But my kind of hashtag Ask Alex video started out with me very static, sitting mm. on a chair, about 8 million takes, then messaging loads of people saying, please like it so it doesn't crash to the point where I remember I had this American lady who wasn't even in my network telling me that I'm too preppy, I'm too British. Why, why are you so stiff? Lo loosen up. I'm like on LinkedIn. I was like, okay, <laughs> point, point taken. <laughs> I don't know you. Um, didn't take it to heart. I think kind of just loosened up a bit to the point where um, my video, my, the, I've only had one thing go viral on LinkedIn. And I never want to go viral again because it's a pain in the backside. Um, was when I stood fully clothed in a shower <laughs> and was talking about, you know, the tsunami of content and, um, and uh, all that sort of thing. And it went absolutely bonkers. Um, didn't generate a single business lead for me, but you know, I can say I've been viral, um, viral once and then running around the garden dressed up as a pirate. And people are going, when's the pirate coming back? And I'm trying to find some context to bring the pirate back in but not repeating what I've already um, what I've already done. But I completely agree with you. It's very much um, any type of content I think that you're creating um, is a journey. To use that cliche, if you if you will, if you, if you look back to where you've got to start somewhere and start start doing it. So you touched on because um, I obviously see everything you do on in in the public domain in terms of the, the video content that you create and what you're doing on Twitter and so on and, and, and so forth. So you talked about video prospecting so do you inject tom this what i see out on on social into the, the video prospecting that you were doing i'm guessing that's one-to-one -one, yes is that correct a slightly watered down version yeah. right because again um i i've kind of attributed what what i'm doing online to oh this is this is going to be this is going to probably going to make you laugh this is going to be like quite tongue-in-cheek mm -hmm. you might you might recognize some of these scenarios from your sales life all that kind of stuff yeah. whereas when i'm prospecting kind of one-on-one -on -one, and again you, you said at the beginning of this podcast you know unless you've been living under a, a rock but i can i can assure you 
there are lots of people who I've reached out to who don't have a clue <laughs> <laughs> who I am. Right? So I, I, I have pretense of like, well, this is going to be hilarious. You, you know who I am. Because again, that's not, that's not how it works. But I, I, would, I would kind of prospect them, add a little bit of my personality so they get a bit of a flavor, right, of what, what a 15-minute meeting with me might look like. Because yeah. let's not forget, you can have the best pitch in the world the best product in the world because i think a lot of people who are reaching out they they do genuinely have a, an amazing an, an amazing kind of platform or they do have an amazing product they have an amazing service um so that that bit's kind of not as as important really you can you can get to that bit later down the whole process you're just kind of trying to get someone to understand what a 15 minute initial meeting with you might might kind of look like yeah so that's that's the kind of mindset i'm in when i'm making a video mm-hmm. you know it's light-hearted and, it, and it's kind of friendly i'll i'll bring in some personalization or something that i've seen uh, about them specifically yeah I'll, uh, I'll i'll compliment them because everyone likes a compliment right yeah. i don't care who you are or how high you are in your organization people love a compliment that's relevant let me let me make that like very very clear you know there's no there's no point just saying prof cheer or you know you know you know what i mean it has to it has to be relevant um but that's that's kind of what my what my prospecting videos looked like um you know i, w- I wasn't kind of doing skits or sketches yeah. but but i was um i was kind of yeah giving people a glimpse into yeah what what a meeting might might yeah. kind of look like and i guess also a glimpse into you know fundamentally what what working with sales loft will be yeah it's not it's, it's, it's as much that but it's also you know the, the ongoing relationship that one has with an organization whether you're selling a you know a more so in the guy i guess in the world of products because in the world of kind of service or consulting that is much more you know there's much more kind of human interaction in in that but when you're you know on a on a product led it's typically it's typically when you want the human interaction is when something maybe is not going well or there's an update or something and and it's not the you know because when if everything's working and doing as it should be then there's no reason for me you know for them to get in touch with you to say hey it's going really really well which would be also a nice thing for them to do but we always know it's usually when things aren't going well is when people get um is when people get in um uh, get in touch and then so that the 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 kind of the, the the videos that you were doing from a prospecting perspective what was the typical length do you see that would get the best you know re- return rate of 15 seconds 20 seconds 30 seconds yeah i i try to not not go over 40 40 yeah. seconds yeah if you, if you if you're kind of making a video that's that's taking over 50 60 a minute plus yeah. i'd oft, i'd often find that even even though that doesn't sound like a lot to listen to a, a, a stranger who is interrupting your your workday, let's not forget, yeah. for, for kind of over a minute and a half or anything like that, that might be a bit lengthy. And, and I believe you can get to the point a lot a lot quicker than that. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the best videos that I sent, it would send out would be, yeah, between 30 and 40 seconds long. And typically, um, you know, what 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 is the structure that you would take? So you, the, the, the relevant compliment, to your point, everyone likes to be, be complimented, but you know, fundamentally, what like, I'm guessing there is a, a a root structure that you follow within within each video. Would I be correct right in saying that? Or tell me, tell me, no, in each video is completely unique, and each video is different. <laughs> no, they're they're pretty they're pretty standard, right? So again, it's uh, it's a warm introduction. It's the relevant compliment. Then it's identifying a problem, providing a solution, and a, and a call to action. Yeah. Um, when I first started, I would focus very, very heavily on the pain points, the problems, and the. I know that you're struggling with this, and I've seen online that you you'll need help with this, and I believe that we can solve this and that. And I'd watch it back, and I'd be like, "This is, you know, there's a there's an air of like desperation <laughs> in that kind of in that way of uh, way of approaching, you know, and and I also believe that you're never going to make a video about someone or their organization and come across as you you know that you know more about it than yeah. than they do because because you you don't you don't right so i i would often i would often make videos and even hold my hands up and i'd be like i don't know anything about your in you know, expecting someone that might sound a little bit uh, a little bit like counter counterproductive but then i would flip it and i'd say but what i do know a lot about 
is prospecting at scale with personalization and booking meetings that close more revenue. I hit my targets every single month. Do you want to know a little bit more about yeah. that? Because that would pick people's that would pick people's ears up, right? Because you're not you're not trying to you know you're not trying to like lie to them and pretend that you've you've you've, you've kind of learned all about their organisation because you've you've probably spent about five or ten minutes researching, maximum. and you're not going to lie and pretend yeah the maximum <laughs> and you're not you're not going to pretend that you're an industry expert SDR. Let's let's say you're an SDR and it's an entry level role and it might be your first role. Yeah. How can you make someone of a video that that outlines you yourself as an industry expert because you know you, you, you're, not. You're, you're, you're not right <laughs> but i think a lot of a lot of reps are there's a there's a fear in kind of being that open and there's a there's a fear in kind of being being honest and and kind of yeah reaching out to people and and kind of yeah being being open about like where they are in their career where they are in their knowledge but if you're onboarding um with the co- the company that you're at is strong, and they they teach you every single thing that they, then that's all you really need when you're when you're kind of reaching out to someone. You you don't have to kind of fluff it up and add all that other that other yeah. stuff. Um, you, you know, if the value prop is strong, which which I believe at Salesloft it, it, it is, which is one of the reasons I I joined. I yeah. used Salesloft in the past, uh, and I thought. Yeah, I can, I can definitely, I can definitely sell that. <laughs> so, so that's one of the reasons I joined the company. And um, you know, if it's strong, then that that's all you that's all you really need. Yeah, awesome. And again, it's to come back to basics, is keeping it simple. And I do feel that maybe since you're seeing what's happening online, you know, people try to. I, I get why they're doing it, that, but they try to overcomplicate it. And then when you start to overcomplicate things, that when the, the intended outcome or effect is, is, just doesn't work, and you can kind of you, you can kind of you kind of see what they're trying to do, but when it's poorly executed, it's like oh, that's just fallen really, <laughs> really, 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 really flat. So you know, bring it back to um, yeah. bring it back to basics. So as, as as you were doing this and being successful, and said you know watching the the, the engagement and the, the the followers and the devoted Tom Boston fans um, on um, uh, on LinkedIn and other other social uh, social channels, um, how did the internal conversation start to happen around? Hey, we've got someone who's onto something here and is very good at it. What what triggered that to? take you out of a um, I'm assuming you're not in a rep well you are a revenue generating role but not in the revenue generating role in the same sense that, that an SDR is so how did that kind of conversation start to manifest itself internally yeah well I'd, I'd had a few conversations with with people at sales loft about kind of yeah where I might where I might go you know in regards to my next my next role yeah. and I was a little bit I was a little bit lost if I'm honest with you because I'm I wasn't really sure like you know what you know foolishly just said oh well i'll just i'll just go and be an ae you know i kind of i kind of thought look i'm just going to do what everybody else does yeah you know you're an sdr and then you you know you do well and then you become an ae and that's and that's the path yeah. and i actually had that conversation with someone at sales loft and they looked me in the eye and said i don't believe you <laughs> 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 And I'm not a very good, I'm not a very good liar as my, as my wife will, will, will tell you. And that, that very much just crumbled as I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be a, an AE, you know, I'm, I've kind of been in that kind of world for quite a, quite a while. Yeah. And I, I would really love to maybe be in a role that's a bit more creative and maybe use some of the skills I've got elsewhere. Yeah. So I went back to the drawing board and uh, worked with a lot of people um, at Salesloft, um, including Ollie, who we've spoken mm-hmm. about already, um, my old SDR manager Rob, mm-hmm. and we actually said, "Look, let's let's go back. To, let's go back to the beginning. Let's actually create a role, and then we'll go. We'll we'll speak to the relevant people, and we'll we'll kind of we'll we'll show them what we've come, what we've come up with. Yeah. So we we created a hybrid role which was around like content creation but also kind of social selling training for customers as well yeah. as sales loft employees mm-hmm. and then also um, a kind of social media uh, management role. So it was kind of a mixture of everything. Yeah. And um yeah, everyone said yes all the way <laughs> <laughs> all the way up, up to the top and uh, it, it sounded a bit too good to be true yeah. but spoke to um spoke to our amazing leadership team 
who were who were so on board yeah. and just said, "Look, yeah, we want to kind of um, we want to see where you can where you can take this." Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I think it was you know a lot of my conversations about about sales loft were kind of fifty percent. Let's talk about this amazing platform, but fifty percent. I want to know about LinkedIn. Tell me about your social selling. Yeah. I want my I want my reps to be making content. How many leads do you yeah, yeah. Rainer, to to have a role that's that's around that? Because to be able to offer training to our sales loft customers to you know to kind of recreate some of the success that I've had mm-hmm. really um, really gets me going because I think well that's that's an amazing thing to be able to to be able to do, um, but then to also have the opportunity to yeah see where the content. Uh, can go and yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of exciting projects um, coming up in the next few months so uh, you know keep your eyes <laughs> keep your eyes peeled but yeah it's um, it's something that I <laughs> that's that's me that's me plugging myself and um, <laughs> it's something that I'm so excited about you know and uh, yeah I feel very um, very lucky that Sales Loft have um, have kind of backed me all the way fr- from day one but yeah. you know now now kind of more more than ever but i think it's testament a hundred percent testament to the management you know, to the management team at um at at sales loft because they've also allowed you to push whilst your content is very safe yeah, in terms of what, what you're doing you mm. you are pushing the boundaries of what more traditional organizations from a branding perspective may have a bit of a melt, may have a bit of a meltdown about in terms mm. of um you know where you you, you've gone with it but what i think is so clever but simple is that you're you're kind of building on um you don't sell sales lofts it's it's the kind of the passive nature of the content you create is typically having a dig at the role of sales or the sales industry just it's every single person on the planet can relate to what you're you're talking about but the subtlety of how you kind of bring sales lofts um uh into it i think is it's 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 clever because not everyone has that ability to um uh to do that and i'm fascinated to follow your tiktok journey i'm very <laughs> glad you're on <laughs> you're on tiktok now tom in terms of you know if you look at what some of the, the bigger brands are doing and how they're just leveraging some of the trends that are uh, uh that, that are out there and that's just picking up a whole new demographic a whole new generation of of potential uh potential buy but it's also interesting for me uh, it'd be interested to get your view on this is how I've seen a massive shift in terms of the content on LinkedIn change mm-hmm. over the last 15 to 18 months, basically since the mm-hmm. pandemic kind of happened. It's become a, a lot, it, ha- it hasn't gone all Facebook and I don't think it should, but it's suddenly, it's certainly become a lot more human, I, I, I would suggest, and slightly more relaxed still blended with the kind of the corporate messaging that, that that we that we need i mean what have you have you seen that on your, your side of the the the, the coin as it were because no doubt you're seeing different stuff to me in terms of the nefarious algorithm and so on <laughs> yeah I, cer- I certainly think that people um you know with the pandemic have, have felt more more empowered to show their true selves mm-hmm. on online um you know i i changed my profile picture um to to something that was a, a little bit more kind of light-hearted rather than me looking straight down the lens i've kind of yeah i've been really open about the fact that you know i shoot my videos on my phone and they're often on my dining room table and i'm not kind of too worried about it it being yeah you, you know suit i want it to be real and yeah. I, that's the point i'm getting to and i feel like with linkedin maybe yeah maybe even a few months ago or, or a year and a half ago it was very much like well i'm going to present my corporate self mm-hmm. online you know maybe if i'll um if i want to have a bit more fun i'll go on to another social media site but for linkedin it's going to be kind of yeah th- look, look how good i am look at what i've achieved and here's how i'm being successful in, in my role mm-hmm. whereas kind of i think more recently people have just gone well you know, we're all we're all kind of yeah. Most of us are remote working, yeah. and um, and people like to engage with um, with people who are just kind of yeah, being being themselves. I, I almost don't like to use the word authentic because I feel like yeah, that's kind of yeah, it's it's really <laughs> it's really done to death. But I um, I genuinely believe that if you if you create content consistently and you you don't try to put a kind of a front on it or or like um 
yeah, a, a corporate spin on it, if you like. Yeah. If you if you just yourself in your role and you and you make content that you enjoy making, and and you do that for a while because it takes a while, yeah. then you <laughs> then you can you can see uh, you can see su- success. Uh, and I and I love I love the fact that. I jump on LinkedIn and I see people, uh, you know, pictures of people's kids yeah. and, you know, what they did at the weekend. Uh, I know that you love to barbecue, for example. <laughs> I see a lot of, I see a lot of, you know, it's great. It's nice. You know, like, like why, like, why not? You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's social media. And, you know, if you, if you take it too, too seriously, you're, um, you're, you're going to struggle, I think, to, yeah. to really, to really thrive. Yeah. I, I, I... I totally agree with you. And I think also to caveat, this is this, this doesn't mean that everyone has to go and do this. If you can get a proportion of your employee base engaging with this, that's probably good enough. We wouldn't necessarily expect every single person to be to be kind of doing what you did and continue to do what I, you know I do and uh, and so on because some people aren't comfortable in doing it and it's not what they don't feel can't find you don't you don't have to do that then, but those are the employees that want to do it. And that's the other thing. You know, to your point about your skill sets, I do always wonder, you know, how many organizations have got amazing videographers, content creators, and their IT team and their finance team and their marketing team. You know, it could be the it could be the tea lady, it could be the janitor, it could be all the you know, this employee base that they have. And they probably have this massive untapped skill set, which they could repurpose and leverage somewhere else. And you know, I just every time I have conversations with the clients about, it, I was like, "Do you do you really think you should be outsourcing this? You maybe got some some pretty good people who could do you know could do this internally internally for you." So just going back to um, your role then. So are do do you carry are you carrying a number? In sense, is there an expectation that you need to have generated X number of something by the end of the the, the financial year, however your year runs? Uh, well, no. No, so I I kind of report into the the brand and the comms team. Mm-hmm. So yes, the first time in uh, yeah in my career, well at least for the past five years that I've not yeah. had a a number. But are you are they is there any kind of tracking in terms of what you're doing that's generating leads or so you've got some kind of sense of by doing this and this and this this is working but this isn't working so well so maybe we'll we'll do something else type sort of thing. Yeah, well, I think the the great thing is, you know, I've I've spent the the past year and a bit kind of testing the war in regards to like what what kind of content works, yeah. and we've we've seen, for example, uh, huge spikes in engagement of things like webinars um, that I've that I've promoted or, or or events, right? Just just based on some some quite silly, let's be honest, uh, uh, videos, <laughs> you know, uh, about about that that event and uh yeah i've really enjoyed working with um with the team to to kind of put some some numbers about that and to kind of track that because yeah. i wasn't really doing that doing that at the at the beginning you know mm-hmm. it was more just like uh, leads would kind of trickle through here yeah. and there but i think now more than ever we're really able to attribute um especially with things like um utm codes and all that kind of stuff like you know what kind of content is getting them the most traction and mm-hmm. um, it's going to be part of my role to help build that as well but i, I am only a few <laughs> a few weeks in but i think uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to a stage where like say we can we can really start to uh, attribute what good content looks like yeah. and and how that how that turns into leads and then i'll be able to help obviously our uh, sales of customers and our team to uh, to want to better understand that as well awesome fantastic and um, so, before I let you go, because I know that you're 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 busy with your creative uh, your creative juices. Uh, what editing uh, software do you you use? Do on your phone? What editing software do you use? Yeah, so I use Final Cut Pro yeah. on a on a MacBook Pro, and mm-hmm. I shoot on an iPhone. Yeah. I used to work at the Apple Store, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I'm you know I'm kind of I'm Apple through and <laughs> through and through. Um, <laughs> I, I think probably Final Cut might be a little bit advanced for um, for for what most people need. There are there are some great platforms out there that are that are free. They, you know, iMovie is fantastic on a on on, on a Mac. You know, yeah. just for kind of cutting up and, and splicing up uh, content. Mm-hmm. Um, but if there are people listening to this who might have listened to what we said earlier about look, you know, I'm sure there's people who can make content and can make video. And there might be some people listening and go, well, I can't do any of that. Mm-hmm. And I would encourage people to go, well, why don't you actually look at 
what you could start doing on a, on a daily basis and on a weekly yeah. basis to, to help build a brand. And I think, I think a lot of people are missing a trick, you know, with all the knowledge and the experience that they've got, you know, what if they found one thing that they wanted to attribute themselves to as their personal brand and did that consistently? Because I, I very, very quickly became, oh, that's the guy who does like funny sales videos mm -hmm. you know that that happened quite quickly for me uh, and, I, and i feel like people have got the opportunity to go well wh what do i want to be like what do i want to be known for on online is it do i want to be sharing knowledge do i want to be the person who who tells stories you know and, and i feel like yeah that's kind of where organizations should go they should look internally and go we might not have a whole team who are comfortable to you know go downstairs and do a tiktok uh, dance in the living room but we, we, we might have a team who can who could do some storytelling yeah. you know who, who can write some min, mini blogs and mini articles um yeah i think there's the opportunity is huge and uh, i i really encourage people to to kind of look at how they could add to the conversation awesome and uh, what a way to uh, i think close this uh, this uh, returning guest podcast tom it's always like this and I, I feel like I, I i know you more than i know you based on what i've um, you know following your journey on um uh, on online and maybe we'll get to meet in get to meet in person one time uh, one time uh, soon again and go out for uh, for a beer but i'm guessing people they can find you on certainly linkedin they can find you on twitter they can now find you on tiktok if you're on um, tiktok i'll put all those links into the thing somewhere else. I haven't got this YouTube pointing at things, right? Uh, this is not sponsored by Huel, by the way. I forgot I had this this T-shirt on during those that, those that are um, uh, are watching. But uh, Tom, thank you so much for coming on again. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing the, the projects that you're mentioning, um, no doubt, will, will manifest themselves online at some point in the next couple of months. But Tom, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Cheers, mate.